Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a review on the whole Iron Druid Chronicles series by Kevin Hearn. I discovered him last year thanks to a bunch of people knowing that I love the Celts and anything to do with Ireland, the Irish, anything at all. Just give me it. I gotta get it. I fell in love with the series by the first book, which is Hounded. So, because there's so many books in this series, nine, like, in the actual series, and then you have Besiege, which is a bunch of short stories that are connected in some sort of way. I'm just going to do just an overview and then I'm going to talk about the three books that I didn't give five out of five stars because the vast majority of the books that I read in this series are five out of five stars. Couldn't find anything wrong with them but there are three in particular that I didn't absolutely love and I'm just going to talk about that. But overall this series follows a over 2,000 year old druid who is immune to iron and that also comes with um, being protected against certain magics. And his name is Atticus O'Sullivan. He changes his name from time to time because he's a little naughty and gets into trouble a lot but it's basically just Atticus throughout the whole book series because he prefers Atticus and that's a cool name. I like the name. First, it starts out in Arizona, then he, they move, he moves around with his dog Oberon, who is an Irish wolfhound, adorable, okay, so cute, moves around a bit because of stuff happening, basically, he's, he has to run away a lot <laughs> from gods and goddesses and other mythical creatures, they're not mythical in this series, but you know, you get what I'm saying. It's a whole pantheon of gods and goddesses and what it is set up is that the more the people that worship these gods and goddesses believe in these deities the stronger they are so if there's only a couple of people that are say worshiping some uh god or goddess from i don't know like france what is now known as france but it's been like 3,000 years, no one, no one, no one really knows about them. So they only have like a couple of actual followers. They're going to eventually just die out. And at that point, because it's all about faith and worship uh, in this world. It's also uh, urban fantasy. So there's, if you didn't catch <laughs> that, it's urban fantasy. It's set during like the early 2000 or early to mid 2000s and just kind of goes on from there. There is also by the third book, we are introduced to, uh, so, <laughs> uh, he does, he does this whole thing, Kevin, Kevin does this whole thing in the front for pronunciations and I still, I still mess up the names. I can barely speak English, you know, <laughs> as you know it, uh, with all my lovely speech impediments. <laughs> so I'm going to mess up this character's name and I'm just going to call her G. Guayulane G. Okay. G <laughs> uh, becomes the druid apprentice. So it takes about 12 years to become a actual druid. And so they team up by like the third book onwards, but the first two is just Atticus. And I think honestly, the first and second books are the best. I also like the fourth book, Tricked, because it includes Navajo uh, gods and mythology where Atticus is kind of friends on friendly terms, but like it's a little, mm -hmm, you know, you don't know about it uh, with uh, Coyote, the trickster god. And he's helping out Coyote with uh, Skinwalkers. That one was really great as well. So uh, the first, second, and fourth books are my favorite. And then the other ones I gave five 
out of five stars, you know, just because they're really great, but top three would be first, second, and fourth book. Okay, so the next, um, like, I would, I guess, next in line, yeah, of the books that I didn't give five out of five stars, the first one would be Hammered, and this is the third book. Now, I'm thinking that it's going to be, like, this whole series, because Atticus is uh, an Irish druid, then it's going to be mainly about Irishness. But kind of, that kind of changed with this, because we're introduced to Norse, and, like, Norse everything, and I don't care, honestly, about Thor and Odin and all that stuff. This was about finding and killing Thor. I don't really... You can tell when you're at the end of Hammered that things are not going to go well for Atticus for the rest of the series. It takes a long time to get to that, and that's basically the last book. And it's not good. I'm gonna talk about that soon. <laughs> I didn't know that basically from I guess like half of the rest of the book series, maybe maybe more than half, it's gonna be about the repercussions of Thor and Odin and all that. And I'm not I'm I have, you know, a little bit of Norse in me just because I'm Irish and my ancestors situated around Dublin so yes there was mixing involved but I'm mainly Irish like over 65% Irish so you know when I'm told oh this is about a druid and it's a long it's a chronicle I'm like oh yay it's gonna be mainly about and then maybe some other stuff but no it seemed like it kind of switched into the Celts versus the Norse, and uh, I don't... Next one is actually the eighth book, and it's actually Staked, second to last book, gave it four out of five stars, because it's about lots of vampires. <laughs> and one of his other problems that I don't agree with is that there is a vampire that helped wipe out the druids that's like, I don't know, almost or a little bit over 2,000 years or maybe he's older he wiped out the druids uh with the help of the roman empire so i actually if i had to choose i would definitely want to read about the vampires because at least there's like a connection with this very old uh, vampire that worked with the roman empire to wipe out all the druids okay i can see that you know being a problem but like the whole up until this book it was also about vampires and then this whole book was about this particular vampire and just wiping out the vampires and then at the end it's it's about oh yeah we're going um to have to defeat hell and loki because ragnarok is coming and i'm like oh we don't have any like breathing room for Atticus and G and everyone else. We're just gonna go straight into Ragnarok. Okay. <laughs> because we already had a pretty high body count in Staked. And I was like, ooh, this is not gonna be good because uh, the last book, this one, there are so many deaths that I don't even know that half of them should have happened. And, okay, this is my least favorite, the last book. I still gave it four out of five stars because it's Kevin Hearn. And I, I love him and his writing so much. But, oh my god, this book pissed me off. I'm gonna... <laughs> he got four out of five stars be just because all the other books were fantastic, including the um, anthology, Besieged. For one, there were too many deaths <laughs> of side characters I I think too I don't know the the grudges that the gods and goddesses hold on to for 
a very long time that then they take out on Atticus. <laughs> I think there was a better way than um, dismembering a body part of him. Uh, slight spoiler, I just realized that, but you, I'm not gonna say which body part. <laughs> he still lives, but it's a, it's a, it. You have to read it to really see why it's so bad. Because oh, you might say, well. You know, he, he killed all these people, he started Ragnarok, he helped kill Thor, he did all these other, he, he hurt or killed other gods and goddesses. Why wouldn't they want revenge? Okay, I got it. I, I, yes, I understand to an extent, but this is also the main character of a huge book series. I mean, I would be, I would be more pissed if they if Kevin killed him off. Yes, okay, so at least he's still alive. But at the very end, it's not a happy ending. It's like an indifferent kind of negative ending. And I don't know, after nine books, plus a short story, plus a bunch of other short stories that's not in Besieged, we're gonna go with a somewhat negative ending without that much hope. I mean, there is some hope, but it's not actually seen through. It's kind of just hinted at. I don't, uh, like, I was going through a lot of stuff, not just because of COVID, but like work stuff, you know, personal stuff. And the first, basically, uh, the first book all the way up to Besieged, were fun reads and then we get to staked and in you know, these two books it's it was kind of depressing and i don't it wasn't a fun read anymore honestly sadly um and then the other thing the last thing that really that really got me was g she became a big snotty puta at the end of this book and it pissed me off to no end she thinks that she's better than atticus she thinks that she's morally superior to like atticus and uh, even owen and pe the people around her and i i don't like how it was uh ended because it felt like it was you're trying to push some type of weird message and i but i don't know the message very much maybe because so many people were saying that the the goddesses um which makes no sense to me but in the very like in the beginning uh quite a few people were complaining that the goddesses were too aggressive and um too sexual and too independent and they were but at the same time they were too sexualized and they thought people thought that they didn't have their own brain power to make up their own minds about something which doesn't make any sense because the first part of that doesn't match up with the second part that they were talking about but i guess maybe enough people kind of i don't know got maybe got to kevin and he was like okay well i'm gonna try and fix it also because there were people complaining which I'm just gonna, people complain about after the 12 years apprenticeship and uh, G got all of her tattoos, then they started a relationship and that's somehow bad. I don't think it's bad. They waited 12 years to do the deed. I mean, <laughs> that's a long time to think about it. Uh, also the fact that during, uh, like right after the 12 years was up with the apprenticeship they both looked into the magical spectrum and there were so there's threads of like i guess magic um magical feelings i don't know he obviously explains it better than me but like you can see people's intentions and feelings and it's not a lie so it was sh it was described to us that they that it was actual love it wasn't lust it wasn't a power dynamic issue it was straight up love and that was set up and then they talk about how it was love or it is love that they're feeling and not something fake or um unhealthy and then they get together and uh form a relationship 
So I don't understand that silly argument either. I don't know if that got to him or me. Like, I don't, I was not, even in stakes, like he kind of, like Atticus kind of hinted that maybe she's going to go her separate way because she's learning Pol Polish and she's in Poland bartending and he's in Oregon with, you know, the dogs. But then he also said, the the thing was, well, we have endless amount of time because we take this um, tea that basically reverses aging. So he doesn't mind that maybe, she, you know, for 10 years, you know, she'll, she does her own thing in Poland or wherever. That was in the previous book, not in the, the last book. And so it's all set up like it's fine. Like, I wouldn't have mind... Um, minded if they, you know, did their separate ways, but then came back together, especially because they have dogs and the, their dogs, um, had like six puppies at the last book. So it's like, you're pulling a lot of people away from each other. And like, also because Owen is kind of like the third druid and he, he has his own thing going on, but he still like talks to Atticus and G and, he maybe because he's older he doesn't you know feel the need to be <laughs> rude or um, like push people away because of like a fight or something but like what happens with uh g is that atticus and breed a goddess um sends owen and g away from ragnarok and then Owen finds out and he's like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> he doesn't care. He's chilling with a sloth uh, in the Amazonian forest. He doesn't care. Um, and it kind of is hinted that he's kind of grateful that he's not in Ragnarok. But then uh, G is sent to Japan to help um, some Japanese gods fight some other Japanese gods. And then when she figures out that Atticus sent her away from Ragnarok to so she doesn't die, she's like, I'm breaking up with him. How disgusting of him. He is horrible. What a disgusting man. How dare he think for me. And I'm like, you're, you just got out of an apprenticeship, G. You just got, you stop pretending like you know the damn world. You don't. You're like, you're 30. You just finished an apprenticeship. Atticus is 2,000 years old. Also the fact you're not going to blame the goddesses that helped Atticus send you to Japan. You're not gonna do that. Just Atticus. Okay. Like when when she arrives at Ragnarok and he, Atticus is fighting and then like he gets dismembered. She goes up to him and checks on him and he's in pain. And then she leaves. She's like, I'm gonna talk to you later about your decision about leaving me in Japan. And then she just disappears. What is wrong with you? You don't. And that, that is the story of how I got really pissed off. I really don't get this angry, but she really pissed me off. That, how ungrateful. You're, you're, ing you're ungrateful. You're just not grateful. I'm just, I can't. I really can't with her at the end of that book. You just leave your boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, I don't care. You just leave him bleeding out. Well, he's like surrounded by gods and goddesses, like fighting to see if they're gonna like kill him or not. You just leave because he sent you to Japan, so. <sighs> okay. I mean, like, if it was me, I'm like, you know, that's great, fine. And then I'm going to go to Ragnarok, okay, where it's all happening. And then I'm going to get over it. I don't know. She must think that she's older and wiser, but she's in her 30s. And she just got out of the apprenticeship. It's like a few years after the 12-year apprenticeship. And then she got her um, tattoos that make her officially connected with Gaia and a druid. You don't have even half of the experience with Owen and Owen was frozen in time for like 
a thousand years. But Owen is technically like 75 or something when he was frozen. You're still 30. <laughs> You're not, you don't know stuff. Stop pretending that you know. At the end, it's so depressing because he is in Tasmania with Oberon and then this oh, uh, this other dog, Starbuck. They separated, and then the other the um, Irish Wolfhound that made like like sound like girlfriend boyfriend with Oberon, and they had puppies. They separated because G refuses to talk to him and she gets the house and she gets the furniture you didn't pay for it <laughs> and so he's living in a hut with two dogs in Tasmania and I don't get it I know he it, he shouldn't have killed Thor he shouldn't have hurt hundreds of people that were innocent regarding the vampire but are you, you're really going to break up with him because he sent you to Japan? I don't, I don't know what happened. Like what, like she doesn't, she wasn't really like that in the other books. She was kind of snotty. She was kind of a know-it-all, but kinda is different from full on rude and unappreciative and just outright nasty different there's different I mean you could say that that was maybe a build-up and then like the last straw was the Japan thing but you kind of need like a bridge <laughs> that was my rant of the last book specifically <laughs> because I don't think I don't think that was the best ending and I don't know the rationale behind it it wasn't horrible it was just like it's kind of depressing whereas the other books were just like fun reads so it's, it's like i was kind of slapped in the face and confused <laughs> thank you so much for watching my review ish more like rant on the iron druid chronicles i gave most of these books five out of five stars i only gave a couple uh four out of five stars so i think you know if you don't mind not reading the last book and just pretending like the other books are what it is, yeah, definitely do that. And if you uh, don't want to take my word for it, which, yeah, don't, read it. Read all the books and see what you think. And if anyone has read all the books and what are your thoughts on the last book? Because I don't, I mean, you know how I feel, but... <laughs> I need I need to know. Seems like other readers felt the same way because the last book is the least liked out of all of them because I also read the Goodreads reviews. Maybe it has like three and a half or 3.6 or something out of five stars for the last book. So yeah, that is kind of like a, it seems to be, I'm not the only one. Thank you for watching and have a great reading day. Bye.